good morning. I'm hoping to give you a few tips on getting started with your new um, laser engraver. This is an inexpensive model. It's uh, called the Totem 7500MW Desktop Laser Engraver on Amazon. Even though it says 7500MW, which sounds like 7500 milliwatts, it's really only a 2500 milliwatt blue laser, uh, which it does say in the fine print down there. I got this as an open box for $99, which is a pretty good deal um, compared to the uh, list price. Um, it was returned, and I think I know why, and I'll go over a couple of those ideas. The first issue is the power supply. It comes with a like an external PC 12-volt power supply, uh, and this one is rated at 120 volts, output 10 amps. Um, when I got this assembled and fired it up, it became obvious that 10 amps was uh, inadequate. Um, the blue light on high would barely make a mark on paper. So instead, I upgraded to this 30 watt 12 volt power supply, which is commonly sold on eBay for 3D printers. The connection is very simple. There's basically the line input, um, and then there's uh, a positive and a negative output lead at 12 volts. Here is where the um, 12 volt adapter would normally plug in. What I did was simply attach the positive and negative voltage in to the green block here that says motor on it. That's usually used as output voltage for a for a mechanical engraving motor, uh, but it works fine as an input as well. Also, looking at this Arduino board, um, it becomes obvious that there is a USB connection, but there is not an SD card slot. Even though the device comes with an SD card for offline use, it is impossible to use this offline because there is no provision, there is no um, display panel, there is nothing that would allow you to use this offline. It's also a good idea, I think, to have a board under your printer where you can mark off your origin. Um, so I have just a piece of thin foam board. You could permanently mount something to the carriage. Um, I simply marked with a Sharpie marker where my feet go uh, so that I can always line this back up. And then I drew an X and Y axis on here so I'd know where origin is so that when I bring it down to the origin, that's where it's always going to end up. And that's going to make life a lot better for setting up your projects and so you don't have to do things two or three times. Now, I have my engraver attached with a USB port to my PC. I'm using software called Lightburn, which... I think it's a little nicer, and I think it's worth the 40 bucks. but you can do similar things with other freeware. So first, you would want to find your laser. So where it says Devices, I'd click on there and say, Find my laser. It will usually detect your um, USB port uh, and device. Here I've already detected it, um, and it's, uh, it's registering as a Dribble M3... 1.1 version or earlier um, and uh, you can edit a few things on there such as if you edit it you can select a different driver uh, it says it's connected by serial you can set the axis size I've got to set the 200 by 200 which is fine for the moment and I've set the origin to the front left which is where I like it and finish Okay, now, this is the console. You can pull up the console, which is a uh, gerbil console. And gerbil is a control language um, that will uh, process a few simple commands, just enough to move the laser around, and a few G-code commands. Um, you can see your Gerbil settings by typing dollar sign dollar sign. Uh, so I'm going to go here into the command line 
dollar sign, dollar sign, and it will show you all of your current settings. Uh, one of the most important settings is your scale factors here, how many steps per millimeter. When I first got the machine, it was printing huge um, images. For example, um, these are uh, 10 and 20 millimeter squares, but when I first started out, they were printing much bigger. So what I did was I printed them, and then I measured them, and then I multiplied the current scale factors here, steps per millimeter. So dollar sign 100 is, for example, X steps per millimeter. 79 I have currently. It was much higher. I multiplied that by the scale factor to get it down to the right size. And then you can reset these by just typing in the command. Dollar sign 100 equals your new number. Enter. And you're done. And that will save that for good. You could cut and paste these in the notepad and save your original settings to go back to as reference if you ever wanted to. Now, suppose you want to check the focus on your laser. Well, you're going to want to have a very low laser setting um, that you can not burn up your desktop <clears throat> and you can focus it. So, you have to issue a couple commands and this is very simple. You've got to have an action command or it won't turn on or turn off the laser. So G1, F5, for example, and then the M command, M03, with a laser power, S5. You're going to watch the laser over here. Here, I'll turn it over here. And when we hit enter, the laser is going to come on with a very weak dot. So how do you focus it? Well, for this piece of wood that I want to work on, this is the height that I've chosen to work at, where I can hold everything stable. And you're going to turn the laser collar here until the dot gets as small as possible. So you can see right here, it's fuzzy, it's horizontal. I'll turn it back the other way. And it gets smaller, then it gets wider again. So you got to go back until you find that happy point while wearing your glasses, your laser glasses. Um, and uh, if you look at this with the laser glasses, you can see that's a pretty small point. That's pretty well focused. Then how do you turn off the laser? You issue an M5 command, M5, enter, and you'll see the laser will turn off. Okay. There are two modes that you will use for engraving. One is when you're just doing lines, such as the outline here, and that's fairly quick. If you're doing a raster mode, which is fill, fill mode, that's a lot slower, um, but that's how you're going to get your solid writing or solid shapes. This was done with the fill mode. So a quick example of using line mode, let's just type some text. We'll go over here and uh, select the text tool and come down here and we're going to just say test okay and now let's use the select the selector key pick it up put it in the origin where it belongs bottom left corner pretty much and now i'm going to size it here i've got it locked to keep the proportions the same I'm going to make it a bit smaller. Okay. Now, how do I print that out? It's pretty simple here. Um, you want to go to the layers window. Um, how are we going to get the layers window? Well, if we go here to the window menu on the top and pull down layers. Right here it says cuts and layers. Check that box off. So here you'll see we have this set for a speed of 180 millimeters per second and 75% power. Uh, let's see what we think about that. Let's try that out real quick here. We're going to move this out of the way. Let's see. First, I'm going to line up my workpiece to where I, I want it. Got the origin. Okay. 
Okay, I'm going to hit start and let's see what happens. And there it is. That's nice and clean, simple. I mentioned that I was setting the speed uh, to uh, 1800 millimeters per minute. And I didn't make, and I wasn't very concerned about that. And the reason why is because if you look at the <coughs> GRBL settings here, there's a preset um, maximum speed. So here, maximum rate for x and y is 500 millimeters per minute so it's really irrelevant what i put in here is 1800 it's going to stop at 500. so now let's uh, look at um, using the laser to do fill so let's uh, load in a picture so we're going to go to file and import it's huge okay let's make it a little smaller up here we can just easily uh, cut it down about 10 percent oh yeah much nicer and let's put that near the origin now if we're going to do fill what we usually we'll do is go ahead and go under tools and trace image Oop, tools trace image and then we'll give you some options here <coughs> um, Let's, uh, I'm going to change the threshold here because it's got this watermarking on here that I want to get rid of. Let's try that. Uh, and uh, let's fade the image to see the lines. And you can see we have all the lines that we want here. That's pretty good. And we're going to delete the image after trace and say OK. And now it's, it's all set to go. So, <clears throat> again, where our setting here is set to line, we're going to change that to fill. Okay, 75% is probably going to be a little high because it's really dense using 0.1 millimeter lines. Uh, so I'm going to cut down the power to say 50% just to see how that works. And again, the speed here of 1800 is going to be overridden by our our maximum rate setting of 500. So that's okay. And we're all set. I got a piece of oak here. I'm going to type in my commands to uh, in the console. Okay. So now we've got our our focusing power going here, and we can try and work on the beam. That's pretty small. Okay. Now I'm going to type my M5 command. Turn it off. Okay, here we go. It's been about 10 minutes. This image is 24 by 27 millimeters. So you can see why it's not really important how big your laser engraver is because in reality you're going to almost never do a huge laser engraving item because it would just take the rest of your natural life. Almost done. So, let's see what we've got.
I would say it's a nice clean burn. Maybe you could use a little lighter power. It's pretty good. All right, so thank you for watching. I hope that is instructive, and I hope it solves some of your problems and saves you some time in your learning curve. Um, and enjoy your new hobby. Thank you.